Okay, Nebu. Can you tell me if there are any problems with my smart home today? Here are some issues in your smart home today one. Available devices. Many devices in various categories like switches, binary sensors are reported as unavailable, including air purifier, various lights in the living room and dining room, dining switch and blinds, multiple motion sensors too. Hey there, welcome back. Now recently I was having a look at the Seed Studio website and I see that they've released a new version of the re-speaker. This time it's got four mics and it's got a special processor that allows it to understand voice over background noise. In Home Assistant 2025.10, they've also just released a functionality where you can actually access two different wake words and two different voice assistant pipelines from the same device. So we're also gonna test that out and see how it works. Now to be totally transparent with you, as always, Seed Studio did send me this device free of charge, but this is not a sponsored video and they have no control over what I'm about to say. So this re-speaker has the Exmos XVF3800 speech chip built in in order to do the voice processing and to operate. It's got four individual microphones and then it's got this ring of LEDs all the way around which gives us a very good feedback in which direction the voice is coming from. Now make sure when you're ordering this item that you do pick the correct options. I've selected that I wanted the chip to be included. Now it does offer a case option as well, but unfortunately it doesn't seem as if you can get the case with the actual chip included. You have to either go for the case without the chip or the chip without the case. So I would need to be able to build some type of a 3D printed case in order to house this device. Now I haven't done this as yet. Any of you clever 3D print designers out there I would much appreciate it if you can design something with a nice speaker enclosure as well. So taking a close look at the board, you can see first of all we've got two USB-C connectors. Now this is quite important, if you want to address the actual XMOS chip over here, you would be flashing it via using this USB-C down on the bottom side. If you're wanting to flash the ESP32, for example with Home Assistant, uh, ESP Home, you would be connecting directly to that one over there. So that's quite important. Next up, we have the four mics. So you can see that they're positioned at the four edges of the board. We then have a speaker output. So you can connect this directly to a speaker. I think it's got about a one watt amplifier inside. So we're not expecting to get great sound out of this, but you have got over here a mini jack plug which I've been testing it, running it into a USB speaker. Then on the board itself, we've got the XMOS chip sitting in the middle here. On the underside of the board here, we have these multicolored LEDs, which are pretty cool. They show you the direction from which the microphone is picking up. So I've got this hooked up running with a Bluetooth speaker. Let's test it out. Okay, Nabu, turn on all of the lights. Turned on all of the lights. Okay, Nebu, what time is it? 11.23am. Okay, Nebu, what is the weather today? I'm here and ready to assist you. How can I help you today? What is the temperature in the house? The current temperature in the house is 25.5 degrees C. So as you can see, the mic works really well. I do like the way the lights actually show you which direction it's actually listening to you from. And as you can see, it's pretty much as normal with Home Assistant voice assistants. Sometimes it gets it right, other times it gets it wrong. Certainly having the AI agent in the background makes a huge difference because it gives it a lot of context. So when I ask for the temperature, it can actually understand me that I'm looking for the temperature in the house. I don't have to tell it which specific device to actually go and find out. I have taken out the pauses here. As you know, these devices are pretty slow to respond still, and I didn't want to keep you waiting. So next, what I wanted to try on this device is the new functionality that's just been launched in 25.10. What it shows is that you can actually now load two voice wake words on one device. So let's have a try. So you can see here in my configuration that we've got two wake words. Wake word one is OK Nebu. 
wake word two is hey jarvis now what i've also done is i've actually assessed um, selected two different assistants because i want to see if we can have a different voice responding to each one of these so the first one home assistant the second one home assistant cloud now if we go and have a look at our voice assistants we can go along here there we go voice assistants and now you can see that the home assistant has a southern english female voice um, and the other one the home assistant cloud has alan a male voice um, so let's actually see what is going to happen if we test this out okay nabu turn on all of the lights turned on all of the lights hey jarvis turn off all the lights turned off all of the lights now i'm not sure if it's because i'm using the beta release or I'm doing something wrong in the way I'm setting these two up, but it seems to work with both of the different wake words, but they don't seem to call a different voice for some reason. So let me know if you've played around with this and if you've had any more joy in getting it to work. Now, one thing to bear in mind with this microphone is that you do need to upload some software and flash it to the device before it will work properly with Home Assistant. They offer a complete wiki showing you here how to do it, but there is a little bit of messing around to get this working. Once you've uploaded the new software, they then give you the access to the ESP Home software, which you just flash as normal to the ESP chip, and then it's all ready to go. So overall, I've really enjoyed playing with this device. I really like having that four mic array, and I love the way that it shows where the voice is coming from. So I can recommend this device. Do bear in mind that you will need to print your own 3D case for this. Um, if you guys have got any clever ideas about how to design a case for this, please let me know and share it with me because I'm not at that stage yet of actually designing 3D prints. Anyway, that's all for me now. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you're doing with your voice assistant. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.